Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit Photo, episode number 40, recorded on January 17th, 2012. Koi, then. Twit Photo is brought to you by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to create a high quality website or blog. For a free trial and 30% off your new account for three months, go to Squarespace.com. Use the offer code Twit Photo One. And by Gazelle, the easy way to sell or recycle your used electronic gadgets from your home or office. Don't just sell it, gazelle it. Gazelle your used gadgets today at gazelle.com. It's time for Twit Photo, the show that uh, I, I look forward to every week. It's all about the art of photography. We talk to some of the best photographers in the world, take a look at their work, ask them how they do it, get some lessons from them. It's just really fun. And of course, we owe it all to our host, Catherine Hall, uh, a brilliant photographer in our own right. CatherineHall.net is her uh, website. And uh, you bring in some of the best people. I'm just, I'm just thrilled. Here's, here's your post for the New Year's resolutions. A little late. I know. Two weeks late. <laughs> yeah, photographers, we're, we're not the quickest bunch. <laughs> and I love this picture of you. That was the uh, outfit you wore a couple of weeks ago for yeah, our show. I figured it was my New Year's Eve shirt. That's so cute. Trish gave me that shirt. So. You, look, you look like you're about to take on the world there. There we go. Yeah. There we go. So I have 10 tips for you today. All right. <laughs> we don't need to read them all. But people can go to our blog. You can pick them. Pick one or two. CatherineHall.net. Click the blog. So it, basically, I wanted to make something that was kind of quirky. Not, not serious resolutions, but kind of making fun of photographers, including myself, and um, going through some of the things that go in our heads. I did read the inspiration for this, which was the uh, 10 year, New Year's resolutions for designers. For designers. Which was hysterical. Exactly. So this is for, t for photogs. If you spend every Friday night with a glowing monitor, you may want to get out more. Yeah. Photographers <laughs> spend a lot of time in front of their computers. Yeah, weekends don't exist for me anymore. It's kind of a blur. Yeah. <laughs> this is actually not so tongue-in-cheek. When you're creating, listen to that hard knot in your gut. Let this be the guy. Trust your gut. Especially when an idea first strikes you as stupid or absurd. It might just be your jackpot. Yeah. And that, that's actually very, very true. If you're not risking or if you're not putting something right. out there, you're not... So when you so you're saying if you get scared that's good that's that's a good sign you're looking for that and uh, if you fail then that's fine mm, but sometimes but that's how you, you felt won't. I'm sure when you started doing this show right yeah that's how I felt course. when I started building this studio Definitely. it's like oh my god what have we done <laughs> so far so good in the grand scheme of things you are not that important don't just keep your ego in check how about leaving it at the door you know you're so good at that oh, for somebody so talented so beautiful. You're, you're very normal and down to earth. Kind of like you, Leo. You could be, yeah, I'm so beautiful. <laughs> you could be, you could have, you could be a pain in the butt, but you're not, you're the easiest person in the world to work. And yet, <laughs> here's, I like number four, being a perfectionist can paralyze you. So you are a perfectionist, though. Um, this was actually one of the things that stunted me at first most in my career. Because yeah. I didn't want to put anything else out there. And in the social media era, you can't hold on to your stuff. You've got to just, the clock's ticking all the time. Thing. If you leave, if you hold, if you hoard, you're gone. Your history. I will so. leave the rest. There are ten in total to uh, to your <laughs> homework. Leave the last one. It's funny. <laughs> Don't take lousy images. <laughs> I have to bowdlerize it. <laughs> Don't and, take beats. <laughs> and then think you can infuse them inspiration. This is what I do, by the way, by retouching them with Photoshop or Instagram filters. Learn how to craft exceptional images in the first place. This is the true art of photography, and that's what this show is all about. Wow. Is learning how to make those beautiful images. And what is one of the most important aspects of photography? Leader? What? Design. <laughs> you know, it's funny. A lot of the photographers we've talked to, and we've done so many great episodes of this show. What, what episode are we in? We're in 40. So, oh, 40. That's a big one. Yeah. yeah. The big four. Um, are artists or designers first? They studied graphic design or painting mm -hmm. first, which taught them composition. It taught them how to think about images. It taught them about negative space. People like me, I'm always looking at what the picture is about instead of what the picture was not, you know, yeah, was not exactly. there. And uh, and that's, I think, helpful in making you a great photographer. Definitely. And our guest is a perfect example. Yeah, so today we have Coyvin, who is formerly with the New York Times for five years. And he's been credited for revolutionizing 
the way the Times dot New York, NY Times dot com they do such a good transitioned job. from print to so originally there was a little bit of hiccups in the beginning you know because they were really trying to mimic the newspaper but it wasn't giving the best UI design right. user experience so he came in and the team that he was with and they basically completely redid and he spent five years there this is his, sort of his baby I would say Coy welcome <laughs> it's good to have you thanks Coy Vin from subtraction.com He's also named one of the 50 top designers in America. So, wow. But you're cool. a photographer. He does photography. And I think it would be interesting to start off with why is photography so important to you as a designer, Koi? Well, I think if, if you're a designer, you're, you're really dealing with you know, the combination of text and images you know, almost all the time, if not all the time. And just really understanding how photos are made, how good photos are made is, is a really essential part in, in you know, sharpening your design skills. One of the things I, I always liked about the New York Times uh, front page, and by the way, you left six, more than six months ago, so you can't be held yep. responsible for anything that happens since. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> One of the things I really like about the New York Times front page is it, you, know, you have the traditional New York Times masthead uh, and a date... Uh, but you also have, and, and the articles are columns, which so there's a, it, it is reminiscent of a newspaper, but I love the integration of both, of multimedia, of both pictures and video into the Times pages. They come alive that way. And the Times has especially done some really great stuff in the Bits blog and in the tech side where you've got mm -hmm. infographics and really, I think, really done a nice job of pushing the art. And yet, not not leaving behind the newspaper. Yeah, I think it's, it's. I mean, like I've said many times, it's really a team effort, and I played, you know, uh, slightly larger than a bit part in it. But you know, the infographics are come from a really terrific team who's working on that essentially 24 hours a day. You know, the reporters have immersed themselves in multimedia. You know, the the business side of, of the company is sort of really, you know set the groundwork to make a lot of this happen. So uh, I, I can only take a tiny fraction of the credit for it. Well, we'll give you a little more than a tiny fraction. But He's humble. <laughs> it's, it's good to have you on. Now, have you, since Thanks. you left, have you been still doing design or have you done more photography since you've left? Well, photography is really just a, a, a hobby for me. You know, uh, I left the Times uh, in 2010 and I uh, started uh, a new business early last year. Um, it's uh, called Mixel. It's a, a social collage app for iPad. And that, Which we have, by the way, time. recommended and shown on iPad today. It yes. was my app cap a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, I, I saw that. I, yeah, Mixel is very interesting. And you know, it's funny how people like M.G. Siegler, who is not an artist, yeah. can't stop, can't Sarah stop was saying it. this, can't stop creating these collages. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't that yeah. the point, Clay? I mean, aren't you, isn't the target for the, the non-artist? Absolutely. Yeah, we, we really think that tablets give us an opportunity to help non-artists make art. If, if we can make it really fun and really social and really um, you know, conversational. And, um, and that's the goal, is to, to reach a wide audience of people who don't think of themselves as artists and, and draw them in and, and let them have fun doing that. Your timing was good because uh, it was right when that meme was going around of the pepper spray cop. Oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. uh, very early on, part of the kit that people were passing around was him yeah. so that you could make your own. And it made it as easy yeah. as could be to make your own pepper spray uh, cop uh, yeah. montage. And a lot of them came about. And I think you did. A, I think you have a lot of credit for that. Yeah, actually, Anil Dash is the one who put together that Anil original that. kit. And, right. Yeah, people, um, you know, picked it up and remixed it and, and just went to town with it. It was it was really great to see. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> yeah. So what, why why are you, I mean, I see this sort of as an Instagram kind of inspired. Not exactly. Well, I mean, taking it from, here's where I'm, how I'm seeing it. Giving access to people that are non- Not artists. Art, yeah, so yeah. Instagram really does sort of promote creating art despite your background and it's quick yeah. and it's easy and it's it's simple you can yeah. learn it very quickly yeah how did, in, did instagram came out before mixel was that an inspiration for you at all and how do those it, two sort of correlate 
It definitely was an inspiration to us. You know, we're big fans of Instagram. We think they've done so much right. And the the key lesson for us is if you let people um, get a little bit of creative satisfaction almost immediately when they come in, when they start you know, fooling around with stuff and um, and and just tr trying it out, then you can really just draw them in and, and get them engaged in a way that a lot of art making apps haven't been able to do. Um, uh, whether you're talking about desktop apps or even you know the first wave of iPad. Uh, and tablet apps. So, um, so looking at what Instagram did, and and also how people were really using visuals, really using photos to to conduct conversations, was a huge inspiration to us. Yeah. So w the way it works, just so if you if you didn't see the iPad Today show, is that people can uh, create bits. It, it's a collage. It's a really fun collage tool by itself because you you know the touch right. interface really makes it fun to drag things around. But you can also in this process create bits which you can then share with your friends. So right. and Neil Dash created a, you know, a pepper spray guy bit, uh, you know, thing that he, and then a kit, he actually called, it's a kit. So he had all the pieces that you would need. Then you can get his kit and add it to your images. And then everything is, conf is further shared down the road. It's almost like, uh, like the GPL, it's viral, uh, viral sharing. So if you create something, right. you share it with others. And I love that idea. It's really right. Fun. Every, it's, every image is is uh, you know saved on the date on, on the server, so anybody can pick it up and reuse it and remix any collage. It's it makes it so that uh, there's always something that you can use and always something that you can you know start from. Right, right. So taking, I mean, you're taking this next step where you're not only creating imagery but you're using other people's art as part of your imagery. How does that right. make it more of a social? What's the goal with that other than making it more of a social experience? Sure. So I mean, part, of, part of the challenge of collage is if you don't have a lot of good stuff to work with, then uh, it, mm. it's not that fun. So every time you add something in Mixel, um, it actually um, gets uh, saved on the server, as I said, and it becomes available to anybody else to use. So there's, you know, an endless array of bits or, or images that you can pick up and reuse. And even if somebody has cropped, you know, a, a picture of like a a pepper spray cop, you, you know, even if they've they've cut out just a single part of it that's you know of, of interest to them you can go back and you can revert to the original collage or to the original image and uh, and cut out a, an entirely different part so it makes the the act of creating the collage is very very fluid very easy and it it, it lets it lets people riff on each other's ideas uh, almost endlessly and um, and really conduct these visual conversations when, when I, I'm looking at your Instagram feed, since we're talking about mm -hmm. Instagram, yeah. and what I like is uh, your pictures are all very designerly. You're very much thinking about the composition and the elements, and uh, like this hundred dollar uh, Monopoly yeah. money uh, bill, you almost you almost feels like a piece on Mixel. It's like yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah, it's like I want that. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna, do you do you see photography as collecting ideas? Yeah, I, I very much see photography as a way of collecting ideas and and helping to articulate those ideas. So if I see like a, a that's actually a piece of monopoly money. If I see that on on the ground and it's an interesting arrangement, I will capture it as a way of of saving it for later, but also as a way of sort of of composing an idea and getting that out in the world. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. So you've spoken a lot. Can you explain your philosophy with your grid concept and sure. how grids can help create order in a, a disorder? This is beyond environment. the rule of thirds that we always yeah. talk about. Yeah, yeah. We're taking right. the rule of thirds to the next level. Yeah. Well, the rule of thirds is, I think, a, a, a really good start of it. And sometimes you don't need to go much further. I mean, um, the way I, I always think about every composition is that whether you acknowledge it or not, there's an invisible grid there. And, and people will, will look for um, some sense of order uh, in any composition, even if, it's, if you know, no order was intended. People will look to... Uh, look for things that line up and for some some sort of um, of of just overall uh, compositional story and in design um, in, in web design that 's particularly important um, because you 're really trying to create an atmosphere where people are 
are you know they feel at home they feel that that the publisher or or the proprietor of the site has sort of anticipated their needs and has organized things mm -hmm. in a way that that really makes sense for them mm -hmm. so um so i've been talking about grids for a long time as as a really fundamental compositional tool for designers to learn and and i I haven't talked about it so much for photography, but I'm always um, sort of you know looking through the lens with that in mind. Well, it's interesting because a photographer, uh, and I've learned this from this show, is always uh, in a way doing this a similar thing by uh, getting your eyes to follow a path on the. Yeah. Is, is that accurate to say right. that? Definitely, definitely. That that you you're very aware of what people will look at first, second, third, fourth, and very often this is true in painting too. There's a path. That you almost want the viewer to follow in the in the photograph, and that's the story in a way of the yeah, photograph, exactly. right? So the grid helps you, I think, in terms of organizing that photograph and the composition of that photograph. Yeah, definitely. I mean, how how are you? I mean, so you walk up to a scene. Are you mm -hmm. seeing it in lines? Are you seeing it? Uh, how are, how's your brain digesting it from a design aesthetic? I look for shapes first, and then I try to align the shapes with this sort of invisible grid. I, Here's I mean, an example I, I just wanted to pull up from your uh, subtraction.com website. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Two perfect. cars uh, waiting in a stoplight in Orange County. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you count the lines <laughs> in here, <laughs> there are quite a few. There's a horizontal uh, line from the, the tree line, another horizontal line from the stop line. There's a, a vertical line going through it from the lane. There's a vertical tree, another vertical tree, a vertical post, horizontal lines from the light poles. This is a grid in action. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm always trying to get the lines as, as straight or perpendicular as possible. That's sort of the, the aesthetic that, that attracts me and that I aspire to. So That's a designer so, for you, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Nothing messy. Yeah. I, I want I get, I don't <laughs> messy when I shoot. I get back yeah. and I'm like, oh, it's all crooked. It's all crooked. <laughs> me too. Yeah, I admire that. That's, I really admire no, that. No, no. That's what we use the uh, Lightroom for. <laughs> yeah, I know. Exactly. I'm a draw, pro draw at the line. Lightroom tilt. Right. <laughs> So and then, well, here's a mess. Here's another one. This, these are lines, but uh, not in an orderly fashion. Order. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. do you think that people either intuitively know how to see like this, or they're trained to see like this? How much is innate versus learned? I think composition is um, is a a skill that you learn and you acquire over time. And um, I mean, I. I remember learning this in art class and then in art school like i went to art college um over time so um, i think you really have to um be um be always working on it always always looking to improve um you know your compositional skills um but it's not something that that you know it i mean maybe for some people but for most people it's not something that just sort of automatically happens without any effort here's a perfect example uh, you know this is your brand new newborn baby yeah. Hours, hours old, and uh, instead of as m almost any dad would do, taking a full-on frontal picture of that baby, you've moved her yeah. to the upper right-hand corner. Yeah, that's a trick I use often. I think if you, if you keep things off center or just peeking in from the side, I think it adds a lot of visual interest. I think it. Uh, I think most people expect subjects to be squarely centered, and and if if you just set it off kilter a bit, I think it adds a lot of. Uh, a lot of visual, you know, um, sort of mystery to it that uh, that otherwise wouldn't be there. It's the first thing I tell you when you look at a snapshot, you know it's an amateur, because everything's in the middle, <laughs> right? And and a, yeah. and a pro very rarely will center uh, the object of interest. And I don't, it, it maybe this has to do with that eye motion because you do you don't just sit and look at this picture your eyes move in this picture yeah. and that's what you're looking yeah. for right i mean did you feel like it was risky with the crop not only to the side but you actually cutting off i bet the you eye. took some full face pictures too yeah you just, oh, didn't, yeah. Pub you just didn't publish them but what about yeah. like not letting her eye complete was that something that you consciously thought of or um i'm not sure i consciously thought of that you know what what i was looking for was um I wanted to communicate as much information as I could with as with as little of the subject as I could, and and I I, and I wanted people to sort of focus in on the hands and the juxtaposition mm -hmm. with the nose and the eyes, and mm -hmm. and 
And I think some combination of conscious and subconscious decision making, I sort of decided, you know, like the edge of the eye wasn't really necessary. So uh, I made the crop from there. And this, um, there's a sto much more of a story because of this, because she's sleeping, but her hands are so busy. You know, they're doing yeah. something. And so there's this great tension in the picture because of the composition that might not have been there. By the way, she's, yeah. her name is Twee, and you, she has Twee.me, which is fantastic. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, she's, that's, she's, she's in the making. A that's the best the website, making. boy. Yeah. That's great. Twee.me. Thanks. She's at two and a half. Hasn't been updated for a long time. <laughs> Doesn't matter. She's got it. You know what's yeah. funny? She, he has the website for her, but he said something to me that really made me laugh. Tell me about how, what your daughter equates the landline versus the cell phone to. Oh yeah, this is interesting. This just came up the other day. I um, I had my landline phone. We still have one. It's actually a Vonage line. But um, and she was asking me for the phone. I said, "Here's the phone." And she said, "No, that's the telephone." Wow. And for her, a telephone is the landline, and a phone is uh, is um, something that can take pictures. She's three years old. That, now. That's, that's very yeah, so the, for a three-year-old. So the telephone's yeah. the phone, and then the actual cell phone is the camera. Wow. Right. Isn't, right. isn't that interesting? That makes a lot of sense, actually. So which kind of brings up the point of the sort of merge of communication and how visuals and pictures and image, how everything's becoming one and the same, in yep. a sense, this mixed media yeah. world. So uh, how, what do you see as the future? I mean, obviously, collages is a perfect, the Mixel is a perfect example mm -hmm. of that mix. Yeah, um, yeah. let's talk about it. We're yeah. gonna, but we're going to take a break. Take a break. So uh, sure. we, uh, we're talking to Koi Vin about uh, his work, his photography, and his design. Uh, we thought it would be interesting, you thought it would be interesting to have a, a designer on to talk yes. about photography. So concur. we're going we're gonna, to, I do concur, we're <laughs> going to take a break. When we come back, you're going to take your many years in art school, your many years of design experience, and distill it all down for us <laughs> so that we don't have to go to art school. How about that? I, like I can't wait to see how that turns out. <laughs> <laughs> Koi Vin, it's great to have you. Let's talk a little bit about Squarespace.com, the secret behind exceptional websites. If you're a photographer, you can see, you know, every photographer we talk to has a website. More than one in many cases, they show their images. This is where you speak to the world. So it's certainly true that if you are getting serious about your photography, you've got to have a website. But it's a kind of a challenge because your business is not web design. Your business is photography. You may not have the skills of uh, somebody like our guest. Squarespace makes it all very easy for you. Look at that. They've already got the stop censorship bug up on squarespace.com. I'm not surprised. Squarespace.com. So here, here's what you get. This is hosting. Very, very good hosting. The best hosting in the business. Plus the best content management software in the business. So it makes it very easy. to It's its everything you need. You go, In fact, you could try it right now. Just go to squarespace.com, click that big green Try It Free button. All you'll need is a name for your site, a password, and an email address. No credit card, nothing. You get two weeks. 100% of the Squarespace capabilities are available to you. There's no you know, watermark or something that says this is a trial site. And you can get started very quickly with their existing design templates and then start tweaking and making it your own. You can also import all the existing stuff if you have an a, a existing site for movable type, WordPress, TypePad, or Blogger. Almost all websites now support those one of those four APIs. That means you get all your content, your pictures, your SEO, your links. Everything is preserved in and you can, if you decide to leave, get it out. You're never trapped. Squarespace has iOS and Android apps that make it easy to post and moderate your site. You get great statistics, too, on the, uh, on the apps. Or you can go to the uh, website and really get a lot of information about who's visiting your site, where they're going, how it's ranked on Google. All of that stuff is handled uh, for you. Squarespace.com. Try it today. I love it that they've, that they've got that link on there. Uh, it's a day early. We're going to talk about the SOPA uh, blackouts that are going on uh, tomorrow on TNT in just a little bit, but squarespace.com. Click the examples too, by the way. The examples will give you an idea of, of how people are using Squarespace. And there's a photography And look at Calvin Hall Studio site. I'm going to build my app site on here. Are you? You should. Yes, I am going to. You should. I'm going to use the Twit Photo 1 code. Good. My discount. <laughs> there's, our, there's our offer code right there. Twit Photo and the number one. Now that's after you decide, I love this. This is for me. I want to buy it. Yeah. You'll get 30% off for the first three months if you use TwitPhoto1 as the offer code. This is so, a good, that's pretty good, 30% off. I know, it's a months. big, you know, it's, 
It's, it's, the thing is, it's very affordable. Squarespace is very affordable. Yeah. That's one of the nice things about Squarespace. Considering you're getting the best hosting in the world and you're getting uh, great software to make your site look unique, take a look at what the photographers who use Squarespace are doing. It's a, um, you know, it's a really great way to get that site up in minutes without a lot of effort. I mean, look at this. This is a, just a beautiful site. So give it a try. Squarespace.com. Two weeks free. If you decide to buy, use TwitPhoto1 as your offer code. You'll save 30% for the first three months. We thank them for their support of uh, TwitPhoto. They're really, really great guys there, and they really uh, love photographers. Their support is excellent, too. So, how many years of art school we're going to get in here in 20 yeah. minutes? <laughs> <laughs> It's nice. It's it's really nice to have Koi Vin on. His uh, website is subtraction. dot com. Uh, he's got a whole photo portfolio. We've been looking at some of the pictures as uh, as we go uh, there, but also information about all uh, of the work that he does. Uh, subtra uh, why subtraction? Well, I'm really interested in doing as much as you can with as little as you can. You know, there's that old saw that that designers often repeat. You know, a design is is complete not when you're done adding stuff to it but when you're, you're done taking stuff away from oh, it and that. um and so that's where that came from also you know I, I registered that a long long time ago and it just happened to be available so you know i grabbed it take what <laughs> pretty, you get pretty yeah. good domain take what yeah. you yeah Boy, how many how many domains are you sitting on right now <laughs> <laughs> i'm probably not as bad as as other I'm a folks hoarder. i have maybe yeah. about 15 or 20 oh that's yeah. nothing oh that's nothing yeah. no, i'm so a hoarder cheap. <laughs> well it's cheap and and if you've got an idea you want to you know yeah. you you were smart you got subtraction uh, you you know there's that, no way you can get that's that. very valuable right yeah. right uh, yeah. get get them now while you think of them if you can if there are still any left that are uh, <laughs> That are unusual and, uh, and useful. Yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. So, uh, so art school. And, and so give us some design tips. So how can photographers, when they're looking through the lens, yeah. what can they look for to create order out of chaos? Well, I, I think, you know, part of what I try to do when I take a picture is, is organize the, the scene, organize the imagery. And, you know, I try to uh, focus. I do that by trying to focus the eye on the things that, are most important to telling the story that that I'm trying to tell, and then I use you know basic uh, compositional skills learned from being a designer to to um, then uh, get the the rest of the scene um, uh, you know in line with that story that I'm trying to tell. So it's 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 really about looking at a scene and and and, and trying to extract the right composition from it. In fact, that's. The first tip you have for us, learning to see through a camera is a great way to sharpen your design eye. So it goes in both directions, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I think learning photography has made me a better photographer, and, and learning design helps me get started in photography. Um, I mean, I, I came to photography relatively late, only when uh, digital photography came along. So um, Here's um, an example but, that you give. This is, a, this is a bulletin board. You call it Craigslist yeah. 1.1. And it's a grid. Yeah. It's very naturally become oh, yeah. a grid. Um, what, did, yeah. what, do you, what do we learn from this photograph? What can you learn from this? Uh, well, that, this is a case where the the elements are very much in disarray. I think anybody walking up to the bulletin board would say, "There's really no order here. There's no there's no master game plan." But you know, what I try to do is step back from it and get things lined up and really show that that um, there's um, there's sort of like a, a, a hidden grid there. There's sort of like a hidden order and right. um, and and. Uh, you know, try to communicate that by you know getting the the angles lined up as, as squarely as I could. Here's another example of uh, lines and grids. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm really attracted to like the the abstract in in the everyday when when you can right. get you know these, those rectilinear shapes, shapes, the curve of that curb. And are you right. training yourself? How are you training yourself to see in these shapes? I mean, you don't. Well, sure, I. I'm training myself by trial and error, by taking you know tons of photos and throwing out the ones that that don't work, and 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 um, and learning about what you know when I when I take a shot, learning to see if it, it comes out the way I want it to. So right. um, tr there's really no other no other you know shortcut that I've found. I'm with you. I think you can learn this because uh, I yeah. don't I don't have any visual sense at all. In fact, one of the reasons I wanted to do more photography is because I'm so. Uh, you know, it, through my career, 30 years in radio, focused on my ears. Yeah, 
yeah. and not on what's going through my eyes. Plus, I've always had poor vision. So I've never been a visual person. So for me, I like photography because it gives me a chance to, you know, br you know, expand my brain by forcing it to think visually. Yeah. And I don't have any of that natural skill. So I do think you can, you can listen to people uh, like our guest and learn more and then, then do exactly... Uh, what you do, Koi, which is look at the images and say, "Why I don't like that? Why don't I like yeah, that?" Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Why does that one work? Why does why does this this bicycle going up this hill work? Because of the geometry. Yeah. And this actually, this particular shot points on another philosophy you have about flattening things, which I thought was really interesting. Because yeah. most photographers, everything's at focus. Everyone talks about depth, depth, right. depth, depth. Right. And he has a different perspective. Can you share that with us? Sure. I mean, I mean, in many ways, this is sort of me doing design through a camera lens. Like, I'm, I'm, I really like flat shapes and really want to sort of organize the shapes um, in, in a way where um, we, we almost like remove the depth. Um, so, so this is obviously like a 3D scene, but um, you know, in, in many ways, it could just be a, a a, a design layout, like it could be right. you know, a picture of the townhouses in the back, and then a, and then a um, a, a bicyclist, and then um, you know uh, the the side of this wall there, um, and so I mean that's that's what I'm looking for um, when I'm when I'm shooting photos all the time. Um, I think that's where the designer the designer in you really is good for us to broaden our. Uh, uh, range, yeah, because you do work in a two D space when you're designing on the web or you're designing right. on paper, uh, mm -hmm. and I always have always been trying to. It, a picture is fundamentally two D, yeah. but I've always trying to get three dimensions well, into it. Most photographers, but sometimes just saying no, no, let's flatten it. It's great, yeah. yeah, and this really works here because of the geometries and yeah, and definitely. and the motion of the bicycle, and I just uh, that really works. And all the shapes. I mean, between the the square bricks and the round wheels and then the yeah. wall above and the. Yeah. windows Love and all it. of it. Love it. So how much do patterns, are you looking for patterns a lot and replicating shapes? Yeah, I um, I look for grid patterns, obviously, and, and that's a, a natural for me. Um, but anytime I can use a pattern to sort of um, uh, almost flatten out space, I think that I find that to be um, really, really satisfying. So um, um, like the patterns on the side of that brick wall, I think were, were really great. Right. Right, right, right. Tip number two, the language of photography is important as part of design literacy. What do you, what do you mean by that? I just think if you're going to be a good, good designer, you really have to understand photography. I mean, there's, the, there's photography on the level of, of compositions, and we've already talked about how, you know, doing one can complement the other. Um, but especially now with digital design and, and designing for social media, I mean, so much of, so much of social media is about photos now and how people think about photos and interact with them and exchange them. And, so true. And, if, and um, we've and all so become really, photographers, we haven't all, we? We all have. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, like, and just, these, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, these social experiences are, are, you know, uh, often thought of as primarily as text experiences, but they're just as much, you know, photo experiences mm -hmm. and, and, and image experiences. Oh, maybe more so now because, of, well, pictures worth a thousand words, but yeah. because of Path and because of Instagram and so, you know, Path is interesting. This is that iPhone uh, Android app that we're all here using. Mm -hmm. it, we're almost sharing our lives in pictures almost entirely. There's a little text, yeah. but it's really sharing your life in pictures, which is fascinating. Yeah, you know? I think... I think that's really fascinating. Here's an interesting image that I would have gone for depth of field, but I think you were so right not to. You flatten this right. because there's there's so many planes, and every object is of interest, and it's a, it's just a geomet much more of a geometric picture, because of uh, everything's in focus. Yeah, for me, like, it, it, it was such a jumble inside that space, but but. Um, yes, yeah, so I would have yeah. tried to simplify it. I said, right. well, let's yeah. focus on the foreground and the back. I would have said, let's pick one thing. And that would have, in this case, this is a much stronger image because of uh, not doing right. that. Yeah, the, the abstract shapes, I think, are what make it really interesting. And the eye can sort of dart around that room and, yeah. and sort of enjoy all the little details. The light, the way the light skips from each, yeah. each piece of furniture. What, so you're, you rarely are shooting at low f-stops. F are you usually f8 and above, or what's your typical sitting point? No, I, I, I often will shoot at lower f-stops because I... Um, you know, I like, I like, um, 
you know, natural lighting situations. So now that's I, a challenge here. Yeah. Because yeah. This is fairly dark. You want everything in focus. By the way, no shadows. There's no hint of three dimensionality here. Yeah. You know, this is great. Yeah. yeah. So you just were lucky. Did you have a yeah, I often just get lucky and then a little <laughs> bit of post-processing. Ah, post-processing. He goes where yeah. we walk away. Yeah. This is a great example of uh, oh, I know. This is graphic cool. arts in action. Yeah. I mean, that's a design, basically. Yeah. I love that's it. That's a bus stop in San Francisco, yeah. actually. And we may someday see <laughs> a design by Koi using horizontal <laughs> stripes or, I guess, uh, angled stripes. Yeah. That's really cool. Right, it's right. like this is like out of Vogue or something. It's just know. right. Yeah, it's, it looks like your shirt actually. Uh, yeah, there we Catherine. go. <laughs> See, I, I wore this for you, Koi. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. <laughs> Here's another example in Union Square. Uh, uh, the unique, unique Yo store. Actually, this is so. This is in. Right. The sales right. clerk urgently told me photography is forbidden in the stores. Oh yeah, of course. They, the yeah. New York is very protective. Yeah. Um, right. Are you moving around a lot to to get? Because I noticed the angles are so perfect when, with the shapes that you're creating. Yeah, I have to move around a lot. And actually, the previous photo of the, the stripes at the bus stop, I remember basically standing in the middle of the street there trying to avoid traffic in order to get <laughs> <laughs> to get the, the lines so that they wouldn't, you know, like, like curve too much. I was trying to get them as flat as possible. So, okay. yeah, it, it takes a lot of repositioning. Little tip here, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get so caught up by the design that you get run over. Okay, just right. to, just to, uh, you well, know. No, but that's what makes a good photographer. <laughs> it's true. Everything else goes to the wind. I I have done that myself occasionally. Yeah. Just said, Don't stop traffic. I've got to take this. I, the, I, the hard part is I usually bring the model with me. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> yeah. So it's not just dicey. you that's at risk. Here's a picture of another store in the uh, Marais in uh, in France. It's in Paris. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Again, the lines. And uh, the choice of having the wall be half the picture. Yeah, and right. you used to use a lot of silhouettes. I mean, that goes back with shapes 2D. being the most yeah. important thing 2D. and the dimensionality yeah. aspect of it. Now, this was, uh, I'm sure, fortuitous. She just was standing there and you, you liked that profile, right? She wasn't posed, I would presume. No, she wasn't posed. I think she was uh, sort of helping my girlfriend try, try on some expensive clothes. Where'd Koi go? Oh, he's off yeah. taking pictures somewhere. <laughs> yeah. It's no. actually good yeah. if they can be entertained while hey, you're shopping. From now on, yeah, I'm bringing exactly. a camera with me. I hate shopping. Yeah, I, I make yeah. my boyfriend bring an iPad, so yeah, he entertains himself. Yeah. This, is, uh, this is great. This is a snowstorm in New York City. Yeah, that's actually right in front of the New York Times building. Yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah, right in the middle of a, a big snowstorm a few years ago. It says, uh, here was a reminder of how thoroughly pampered and just plain soft I am. Yeah. Because you didn't want to go through the cold and storm to get to work. Right. I, all I had to do was get on the subway and go to work. The The subway stop is right close to the this building. This poor person's work cold. is and in the storm. Out there. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So camped outside in the snow oh. all day long. So, yeah. <sighs> How often are you using your iPhone for these sort of snippets of life, and are you carrying your camera around? I use my iPhone much more now than I um, use my uh, DSLR. Wow. That's just because the camera's so good, and it's, right. it's with me all the time. And, um, me too, and actually. It's great. Me yeah. too. I find See, I, I get restricted with the iPhone. I need some inspiration. Yeah. yeah. It feels hard because I'm so used to having the control I right. have with the DSLR. You have no control in Oh, I miss that too. Yeah. So. Yeah, I miss the control a lot. I'd like to get a, a, a small, uh, you know, micro four thirds or something like that to, to play with. But uh, that's a good idea. Very hot right the, now. Yeah. What is your DSLR? Just out of curiosity. I've got a Nikon D seventy. Okay. I love. I have a D seventy, except that uh, Trey Ratcliffe melted it in the. Uh, <laughs> in the I gave it to him for the shuttle, the last shuttle launch, and, and he, it, it, got it, it got a little melted. It's okay. <laughs> That's he, why he, he gave it to him, knowing that. Knowing it, it was happen. that was part of the deal. He said, "I'll give it back to you, but I can't promise it'll be any any kind of shape when I do." <laughs> kind of working. I think you might actually have more camera gear than I do. I have far more camera gear than any normal insane. <laughs> and then and then the worst thing is I keep looking at stuff and go, "Oh, this new X one one. Oh, that looks good." I mean, I, 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 you gotta but just, <laughs> please tie me up. So, Here's a nice shot yeah. of the, of Mr. President. That's my dog. Yeah. And uh, again, the geometries of the windows, the light from the windows, and then right, the soft right. geometry of a dog in the middle of it, which yeah. is great. It's kind of an ideal subject, too, because he was very still. He was just basically passed out. Yeah. So I had a lot of chances to get Play that with one it. right. Play with it, yeah. One more tip. 
Photography is an essential part of social media now. Understanding photography as a social element is essential for any UX designer. I guess you'd say that was true in the New York Times. Pictures all over, and it really, it does. It makes it pop. Yeah. If it's just yeah. text, mm-mm. Yeah. Well, it's like blog we, entries. If it's just text, yeah, it's sort of hard to, to digest. You've got to have at least entry. have one yeah. image to sort of yeah. relax the mind. And yeah. Right, right. And designing for photos takes a lot of, of practice um, over and over again, like especially user-generated photos like we had at the time, so just creating an environment where those photos could, could work well and, and not be overwhelmed by the design and, and complement each other. I mean, that takes some practice. That is. That's sure. a challenge, isn't it? That's a challenge. Do you want to? I think sites like, or you know, apps like Instagram and, and Flickr do, do such a great job of, of of really letting the content sing. Yeah, I'm with you on that. What about? Hold on, let's take a break. break. Come back with more. Get your questions ready, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, you, you a few have more to keep minutes left. Check. No, that's all right. I'm just moving things along. Keep Koi Vin is our guest, uh, designer and photographer, and we're talking about the value of design in. Uh, in, in in improving your photography. Before we do that, though, how about you want to know how I get all these uh, all this gear? Yes, I would. Like I get to rid know. of the. Actually, I wish this were true. I get rid of the old to make room for the new. <laughs> yeah. No, I keep it all. It's all in the closet Leo, in the drawer. Anyone that knows you knows. I even have that D seventy, a melted D seventy. What am I going to do with that? You kept the melted one. Of course I do. Oh no. Go see. What I should be doing is go to Gazelle instead. Gazelle dot com. This is the place where you can kind of recycle your gadgets and turn them into cash. This is what the alchemists who were trying to turn lead into gold, this is what they were trying to figure out. The way to turn lead into gold. Your gazelle.com. What do you got? Let's see. How about an iPod touch? You got all, you know, I got I got, I got the new iPhone 4S or maybe I want excuse me, I want to get the iPhone 4S. I want to trade in my iPod touch. So I just go there. Now they say a couple of questions. Is it is it working? No, it's working great. I just want the new one. Do I have all the pieces? The battery's built in. The AC adapter, sure. Uh, engraving? No, I didn't get it engraved. Okay, let's see. Ninety dollars. I'll take it. Now I'm, I'm I'm halfway to my new iPhone. So here's the button. It says, put it in the box. So what you do is you get a box. You throw it in the box. I like that. And you keep going. You're not done. Go through your closet. Go through your drawer. Might as well make that box carry a lot of weight. What else do we want to? What else do we want to sell? So you got, got a cameras, Galaxy, a Galaxy. Phones. You got a. How about a? You know what? I want to get this new Canon. So they I'm going to do calculators. They do every. You know, there's I don't know what tens of thousands of categories. You could just go on this and on and good. on. This is not only good for getting cash, but for the environment. I'm gonna. I have that old PowerShot G11. You know, they upgraded that. The, the new Canon. What is it? Oh, the X1. Yeah, but Oh, the G11? I don't know about those things. So I'm going to sell the G11. No, you don't believe in having a, simp uh, a point no, and shoot? No, I just, I compared it to the specs of the S95. I, I, I they're, agree. They're comparable. They're comparable. way bigger. Now they have an APS-C, though, and that's what I and want. My, See, I want a bigger... So I'm going to sell this G11. 145 bucks. Add it to the box. So keep going. That's the idea. They will give you, they pay postage. Uh, they ship it back to Gazelle. And then what happens? You get a check. You get a money order. Here's what you get. Here's your choice. You can get a check. They'll pay Pallet to you. You can get a Walmart gift card, but my recommendation, get the Amazon gift card because they add 5% oh, on top of it. Plus Amazon. Rocks. And every everything's on Amazon. Every camera, every lens I want is on it. I just buy it through Amazon. So that's what you do. So I have just, so I've just, I'm, 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 I've raised $235 and I just began. I will have thousands of dollars in this box just from stuff I don't use. It's getting dust. So why don't you do it, Leo? <sighs> You should do what I don't do, because I'm a pack rat, I guess. 22 categories of gadgets. Every gadget worth a dollar or more qualifies for free, free shipping. If there's stuff that's really old, it's worthless, and I have a few of those as well, like that melted D70. I can't get any money for that. They'll recycle it, though. So, you know, electronics recycling has to be done differently, the battery and everything. This, you're, If you do it through Gazelle, they pay the shipping. You know, just get a bunch of stuff in there and throw the extra stuff in, and uh, they will pay for it and... They don't put it in landfill. They don't ship it overseas. They do 100% green recycling, ISO certified. So you know, you know, like you're sending it to a nice grave, a good grave. You're not sending it to the atmosphere or a landfill. Gazelle.com. I want you to try it right now. Uh, don't yeah, sell go it, home Gazelle. And do it. You know, it's just. You introduced it's, me to so much good stuff, though. This is your New Year's resolution. You want to get rid of the clutter? Gazelle.com.
And you get cash back. It's like a win win. Trish is going to be very happy. She has a pile of Trish stuff. Trish probably she needs has been dying to get, to get you to do this. <laughs> Don't sell it. Gazelle it. G A Z E L L E dot com. I saw an offer code there, but I don't know if there is an offer code. I don't think they gave me an offer code. You don't, they won't ask you for an offer code or anything. Just do it. Just do it. Do it. Do it. We are talking to Koi Vin of Subtraction.com. I, I love this. You put version 7.1 of your website. Are you always redesigning? No, actually, I haven't touched that in, God, maybe six or seven years. Oh, all right. Oh, I, wow. I, I got, you messed yeah. with it for a lot, then you stopped. You got it perfect. Yeah, yeah. it takes so much effort to redesign, so... Um, I've it's, left it. As I it imagine if you're a designer, it's like the last yeah. thing you want to do is, re, is is do free design work for yourself, right? Yeah. Well, no, it's it's fun. It's just you know, it's just you need a lot of free time, and you know, I have a young daughter now, yeah. and I have a startup, and there's not a lot of time to redesign a personal blog. So it's worth reading. Now let's yeah. talk about the startup real quickly. It's on the iPad. Sure. It's free, yes. right? Am I? It's free. So what kind of startup is that? What are you nuts? <laughs> yeah, we are nuts. <laughs> you gotta, how are you going to make any money out of That's, this? No, he got. You've gotten over six hundred thousand dollars worth of funding for it. Yeah, how we, did we you got some great investors. Oh. Why is this such a great idea? Tell me what. So we think um, that uh, just like with photography, actually, you know, twenty years ago there were relatively few photographers, but. Um, what happened was digital cameras came along and made it cheaper to take photos, right. but also uh, social networks came along and made photography a much more communal, conversational, um, casual activity. Um, so we think we're at that stage now with, uh, with, you know, with making art and collage making. Boy, I love that idea. Yeah, so you have this, the iPad and, and, and Android tablets, which are are people are buying them to read and to watch videos and so forth but they're really kind of perfect digital art making tools and they're kind of sneaking into right. the homes of people who don't think of themselves as artists so look at that oh that's cool that's the coolest one thanks um, that's yours so, so we got to follow yeah, koi vin on uh, on mixel yeah. i'm gonna yeah, start following you no, I think collage is very accessible. In fact, I, uh, a lot of times in art, uh, you'll do physical, co you know, cut out. I, my kids, that's what we started with. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It's accessible, and yet it's, it's real art, and it's very appealing. And I love adding the social element where you can have other people give you bits for your collage uh, or search for bits for your collage and then share your collage with other people, and the bits of your collage can become part of their collage. It's like, it's like making the whole world a mashup. Yeah. Exactly. Love that. Yeah. Well, yeah. the primitiveness is, of it is what I think, because it becomes a more of a meditational, social, calming thing versus, yeah. you know, you're so used to working in, say, for example, programs like Photoshop, where your brain is really too much work on. I yeah. mean, it's a right. technical program. This makes you this go. This is more oh. relaxing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, uh, we actually purposely left the tools very primitive. You, you're not going to be able to get the kind of precision you can get in Photoshop with Mixel. Um, but what we found is it's, it's really liberating for people. They don't have to worry about getting it perfect. They just, right. they just get their idea out there. And you're, so. you're, you're, go follow uh, Koi on, on uh, uh, Mixel because uh, he does a variety of stuff. I mean, uh, from, from silly uh, to, uh, to austere to uh, to actually gorgeous uh, fine art. I mean, I think, I think like that's beautiful. The balance in all those shapes. Yeah, isn't that great? Thank all you. black. Uh, so we're yeah, it's, all, it's a, were all those your photos, or did you? How many different people? Help you don't you have to. That? That's the beauty of it. Yeah, you can yeah. search for anything you want, and just take yeah, those. You can perform a web image search right within the app, so you really have access to uh, basically anything you can grab online. So, you know what? Um, you, I, I, you know, I'm always looking for something I can do with my iPad. I always the default is playing Plants vs Zombies. I got to stop. <laughs> I'm going to start. I have this all on here, and I've done it quite a few. But I'm going to do more, and I'm going to follow you, so that I can uh, get some inspiration. Yeah. How about Great. that? Yes. It's been I love that. Really wonderful meeting you, Koi Vin. Uh, follow him at subtraction.com or on Instagram. Right. He's Koi on Instagram. K H O I. Mm -hmm. If you've got the Batman head, then you've got him. All right. And, uh, and also um, Flickr. Koi Vin on Flickr. Is your Koi on Flickr. Koi on Flickr. And, and at Koi on Twitter. And at Koi, K-H-O-I on Twitter. 
So yeah. nice to meet you. You, you, you. See, every time I ha we have somebody on, I want to go out and take stuff in their styles. And now I want to go out and do some graphics, <laughs> some graphics design. I know, you're so easily inspired, Leo. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> some would say inspired. Others would say distracted. Sorry. <laughs> nice to meet you, Coy. Thanks for Thanks joining us. So Thanks a lot, Leo. Bye. Thanks a lot, Catherine. Really appreciate it. It was really fun. Yeah. Mixel.cc. But really, you don't need to go to the website. Just get it on your iPad. M-I-X-E-L. It's easy to find. And uh, follow them online at subtraction.com. Yeah. Chat room wants to know, uh, Ms. Catherine Hall, when are we going to have our uh, contest winner on? Have you booked him he's yet? He's February 7th. February 7th! And he's coming in studio. Well, he oughta. Yeah. And he oughta. We have actually, um, next week, this is perfect segue into next week. Yeah. We have Jack Collinsworth, who's like the king of, um, he loves, he does everything on iPhone. So he's going to actually... You're kidding! We're doing a sort of a different show next week where he's going to do a presentation for us. And you and I can ask questions, and chat room can ask questions, and um, teaching us about iPhoneography. iPhoneography, our subject. Yeah, next so week. perfect I segue. I love that idea. I think that's great. I'll bring my iPhone. We'll take some so pictures. So I'm hoping that this will help me get over my whole. I never took pictures. You of know my what? Phone. It's good because it's um, you know artists love constraints, so it's just another constraint. It's so hard though. Cause like, I just want to get well, you make you want to carry a camera. Back to that perfectionism thing. I gotta yeah, read no. my list. It's you gotta see. This is the medium I'm working in. What can I do that's interesting with this medium? And all you have to do is look at Instagram, and you'll go. I know. People okay. Do such Remember, great Penny work. said that Penny does de los, de los Santos. She, she looks at every morning. That was her inspiration. Yeah, every morning. I'm telling you. Yeah. Catherine Hall is at CatherineHall.net. Go there and read and learn and enjoy her great art. And if, and if you're looking for a photographer, do you still do you weddings or are you going to get out of the wedding business? I do, I do like 10 a year. So, so if you have a very, very special wedding in, and you're in the Bay Area, no, anywhere in the world. Anywhere she'll come, she'll go world. anywhere in the world. CatherineHall.net. And you, when are we going to do the wedding photographer show? That's coming up next month. February 14th. That's going to be very in Valentine's be Day, of course. Yes. How could I forget? We have Jerry Jonas. He's brilliant. Should be a lot of fun. Yeah, he's going to be in studio too. We have five in studio guests in a row. Wow! Thank you so much for joining us. You can follow the show and see all forty episodes now at Twit.tv. Please subscribe so you don't miss an episode. We do make audio versions available. I don't know why. <laughs> There's, but hey, sometimes you're in the car, you can't be watching, you want to listen, and then you go back and get the video because you want to, you know, see the images that we talk about. Uh, Twit.tv, it's all there, Twit Photo. Uh, CatherineHall.net, uh, Subtraction.com. Coming up, tech news today. Big, big story. Jerry Yang, the founder of Yahoo, has just left the company. We'll have it all on Tech News Today. I'm Leo Laporte. We do uh, Twit Photo, by the way, every single Tuesday, except when I'm in Vegas which doesn't happen that often. No. Every single Tuesday, 1.30 Pacific, 4.30 Eastern Time on twit.tv. Watch live and then subscribe and, and, and you can see the difference, which is basically zero. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Twit Photo. <laughs> Mix was so much fun. And I know MJ I just put like, on my iPad app so that so that'll be fun. another tool for boyfriend when I'm shopping. You can play with yeah, Mixel. Make a collage. Boyfriend. <laughs> Baby, sit down make and a make a collage. And you know if you got Photo Stream took turned on, he can take the picture with his iPhone. It goes into Photo Stream on his on his iPad. He's now got it available at Mixel and he could do and he could do collages of you it getting shopping done. Oh, I'm sure he would love to do that. I think well, he prefers to get the, to get the tune pepper me spray out. guy and sprayer. <laughs> oh no! And the old dash. He actually took kid. the photo of me of the resolution photo. Pretty really? Good, huh? Love that. Yeah. You look so angry. That's probably that why. Good. Yeah, you look like Always you, I'm angry you're, when you're, I'm with you're him. doing that. Uh, that that it's, blower looks like a cigar. You go, well, I tried blowing it, and it looks a little weird. <laughs> not sometimes say implication implications better than actuality. Sometimes. I'm not going to say anything. That's right. Uh, as the great chess player Aaron Nimzovich used to say, or maybe it was Edward Lasker, the the threat is greater than the execution. <laughs> there you go. So you were threatening to blow it. Yeah. <laughs> Look at her. I love this picture.